In this video we visit the Wangi National Park in Zimbabwe where we see lions virtually every day and have some amazing sightings but also some very emotional experiences as we are confronted with the environmental impact of local elephant overpopulation and its tragic consequences. But let's rather do this chronologically. On our way to Wangi from Marwe Bay where we ended the previous episode, we popped in at the Painted Dark Conservation Center where you will find oodles of information about African wild dogs. It is well worth a visit. We camped our first night at Gwango Heritage Lodge where we made full use of the pool. Apparently elephants often come to drink from the pool even while guests are swimming. Gwango campsite right next to the gate of Wangi National Park. Good for a stopover. 20 US dollars per night for two persons. Nice swimming pool but you are within earshot of the access road so you can hear traffic passing. We lost a couple of our ready use water bottles overnight at Wangi when something started chewing on them. It later graduated to nibbling on motor oil containers which created quite a mess. After checking in at main camp we may hand it through the park on our way to Camp Silwani. Along the way we saw lots of general game but no matter what you were looking at you could always add and elephants. We saw a truly astounding number of elephants. We also had our first of many lion sightings. It is interesting that lions often lick their prey before starting to feed. So if a lion starts licking you, do be careful it is not necessarily a sign of affection. We came across a very large group of vultures on the carcass of a young elephant and then they were joined by a crocodile. Silwani campsite is located at Kennedy Gate. They kindly allowed us to use their luxury platform campsite for an afternoon visit. Sumadada platform campsite at Silwani camp. This is like the luxurious honeymoon suite campsite. a nice platform overlooking a water hole. And Bushauer overlooking a water hole. While we were relaxing on the platform, a large herd of thirsty buffalo arrived.
the buffalo left as suddenly as they arrived. We spent two nights at Silwani and then had to decide where to go next. Along the way, we suffered a freak mishap. This piece of wood got kicked up and came right through the bumper at the one reverse sensor. It stuck out here like this and we had to saw it in half to get it free. The stick incident also shows that we are not real YouTubers. Real YouTubers would film how they became aware of a potential problem, how they identify the problem, how they think about the problem, and how they solve the problem. We attack the problem immediately, and then afterwards look at one another and say, you know, we should have filmed that. Just look at those ears. In Wangi, you are allowed to camp at some of the viewing platforms and picnic sites. Guvalala was one of the options we considered. Unfortunately, the ablutions at Guvalala were somewhat dilapidated, so we decided to search further. At this one waterhole, we counted 92 elephants being present simultaneously. And as one group left, it would be replaced by another. At Shumba, we also saw lions again. In the late afternoon, we arrived at Robin's camp, where we camped for the night. We booked the Shumba picnic site as our campsite for the following night. The number of elephants in the park have a severe impact on the environment as they are very destructive feeders. We passed through kilometer after kilometer where there were no trees left higher than a shrub. Another problem with elephants is that they tend to monopolize waterholes. I've personally witnessed elephants chasing rhino away from a waterhole. In Wangi, other game were often forced to use the muddy areas of the waterholes where they run a risk of getting stuck. One of our most heart-wrenching experiences was seeing a buffalo stuck in mud. Just as we thought it had mercifully died, it would move an ear again. I have decided not to include that in the video. The overpopulation also affects the elephants themselves. Nowhere was this clearer than at Masumu Dam, a waterhole and picnic site where you are also allowed to camp. It features some of the best ablutions in the park and is a spectacular campsite under normal circumstances. 
but by the end of the dry season the park simply could not sustain the number of elephants and elephants were dying. Misumu was suffused with the stench of dead elephants. This raises the question whether culling, which has become politically unacceptable, should not be reintroduced. But back to more positive matters. This is the Shumba picnic site and campsite. In the distance there you can see the platform at the water hole and picnic site by day but then you can camp here at night there's a donkey fed shower which is not a highlight and a basin and two toilets and as you can see the fence around it is unlikely to creep out anything that actually wants to come if anything wants to come in it's unlikely that a single strand of cable is going to keep it out. Luckily, we are used to and like unfenced camping. We spent most of the day on the platform at the waterhole. Lots of very young elephant calves around. When you are this small, it is hard to reach your meal.
to Shumba, it was time to leave on our way to Victoria Falls. On the way out, we came across a mother with a newly born elephant calf. The soil was still wet where the birth took place and you can still see the afterbirth hanging from the mother. The calf was still struggling to stand up. Even though we think there are too many elephants in Wangi, somehow when you see a newborn one like this, you wanted to make it. to leave on our way to Victoria Falls so we do not know whether the calf eventually managed to stand up. At Victoria Falls, we camped at the N1 Hotel campsite, which basically means that you camp in the hotel garden. It is very centrally situated. Uh, it's secure, surrounded by an electric fence with a guard at night. It's close to the falls within walking distance. The one downside of that is that during the day you can hear the helicopters circling above the falls but otherwise uh, at the price it's very nice these are the ablutions of the N1 hotel as you can see quite nice nice shower decent dry area with a shower places where you can put uh, your clothes while waiting there is lots of high quality art on sale.
At the end of the dry season, there is less water flowing over the falls. But then in the wet season, the spray tends to obscure the falls. The mist and spray from the falls creates a small area of rainforest. swimming in Devil's Pool on the Zambian side. In the next episode we go to Botswana at the height of lambing season and visit Chobi, Savuti and Muremi. We also see all the big cats multiple times. Thank you for watching and do consider subscribing if you are interested to follow the rest of our adventure.